Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the webinar on webometrics ranking of universities, which is organized by the University Research Council, University of Peradeniya. I am Madhushani Selvakumar from University Research Council, and I'm, I'm happy to host you in today's program. The objective of this program is to make the university community aware of the, what university webometrics ranking means, how it influences the global visibility of the university, and as to how the university community can contribute towards ranking. First of all, I would like to invite Professor Terence Madhujit, the Director, University Research Council, to address the gathering. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's my uh, pleasure to introduce the seminar series. Uh, the URC uh, is initiating a series of seminars to keep the uh, university community aware of what is really going on and to support the research. So this is the first of the seminar series on university ranking. Um, now, uh, nowadays, uh, everybody talks about the university ranking. There are different systems of ranking universities. So therefore, um, first of all, uh, let me welcome, um, first of all, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Parakrama Karunartha, who is here with me, and the Director, International Relations Office, Professor Shamin Jindasa, uh, the speaker for today's seminar, Professor Roshan Ragel from Faculty of Engineering, and all the participants. So before we proceed with the today's seminar, um, let me uh, yes, okay, you go. Take over. Thank you, sir. First of all, I would like to uh, invite Professor Parakrama Karunaratna. Deputy Vice Chancellor, University of Peradeniya, to deliver the opening remarks. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to this uh, presentation on how does webometric ranking work. So I think uh, this is a very important one because uh, now everything uh, earlier those days uh, the ranking systems were there, but people didn't give much concern on that. But, but they now, everybody is uh, much more concerned about these ranking systems. That is a ministry, even at ministry level, UGC level, and even the students. They also uh, want to go to universities with uh, high rankings. So basically, the, this series is uh, actually the, the, the uh, director of uh, University Research Council uh, he is uh, planning to organize. He has planned to organize this series actually to give our academic staff members uh, an understanding on how these geometric rankings are done, and uh, what are the sort of different uh, kind of uh, ranking systems we have, and uh, how are they uh, being done, uh, so that everybody can see what is going on, and also we can. Uh, everybody can see uh, the, the, the importance of uh, certain criteria and categories so that we can improve those things. And also, at the same time, I must say that we sometimes face difficulties because uh, we want to submit the things and we know the things are there. But unfortunately, the, sometimes the people are not uh, helping us very much to gather this information from faculties. So it is very important because uh, to submit these things, they have deadlines. And uh, of course, webometric is uh, automatically, it is done. Professor Roshan Ragel will explain that. But for other ranking systems, which we are expecting to uh, in, uh, uh, tell you in, in near future. So this is, going, this is the first one. And uh, there, there will be a series, at least two, the other ranking systems we are, uh, we at the moment we are in, or we submit data, are QS ranking, 
and Times Higher Education ranking system and uh, Green University uh, ranking system. So QS ranking and uh, uh, Times Higher Education are uh, more academic uh, sort of uh, research uh, towards more academic or research uh, sort of ranking, whereas biometric ranking, uh, Professor Roshan will explain you that they mainly depend on external uh, outside linking and those things. Uh, so that, um, so I, I thank uh, Professor Madhujit, Director University uh, Research Council for taking initiative to introduce this sort of uh, uh, presentation, uh, series of presentations to you all. And also I thank very much uh, this, uh, our Professor Roshan Ragel for, uh, uh, for uh, accepting the invitation and coming forward to make this uh, presentation. So thank you very much. And I, uh, I hope that you all will enjoy the, the presentation uh, by Roshan Raghel. Thank you very much. Moving on, our professor, um, Terence Madhujit will be giving a short introduction about our guest speaker today. Thank you, uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor, sir, for a kind introduction. So as uh, he correctly pointed out, the, there are different types of ranking and it is important for us to know how we can contribute to the ranking of our own university. So let me uh, introduce the speaker for today. Uh, he is none other than Professor Roshan Ragel from uh, Department of Computer Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, University of Peradeniya. So he received his BSc in Engineering in 2001 from the same university, same faculty. And uh, he received his PhD in Computer Science and Engineering from New South Wales, uh, Australia. He's holding many uh, international and national positions. I will, I picked up just few. Uh, he's a committee member of university ranking of University of Peradeniya. Uh, also, he serves as the national, he's serving on the national task force on education. He's also the consultant to learn that is Lanka education and research network, which we totally depend on these days for our lecturing. And uh, he's also a UGC standing committee member on online teaching. He's also a UGC appointed committee. I think he, he was recently appointed for the development of the concept of virtual and hybrid universities. Uh, he has published more than 150 peer reviewed journal articles, both nationally and internationally. And basically, his uh, research interests are on microarchitecture of embedded systems, designs, and security, and also sidechain attacks and countermeasures. So, without further ado, uh, let me um, welcome Professor Roshan Ragel, who kindly agreed to uh, uh, keep our university community aware of how the bibliometric ranking works. Over to you, Professor Ragel. Thank you, Professor Madhujit. Thank you, uh, everyone. Thank you for joining and thank you for giving this opportunity to talk about uh, uh, labometric ranking. So, <clears throat> in fact, like we started uh, looking at uh, how webometric ranking works and uh, how uh, the University of Peradeniya can get involved or the adjustments we had to make to appear in the ranking and also to improve. Uh, we started looking at uh, way back in 2011 12, uh, about uh, eight years ago. And uh, we have been doing a number of activities since then. And uh, I'll uh, highlight a few aspects of what webometric ranking is, so how does it work? Plus, I'll also uh, highlight a few uh, uh, aspects from our, or the requirements from our members or uh, colleagues who are part of the university uh, in terms of helping improve this ranking. So, uh, any ranking system, as you already know, as like the uh, DPT Vice Chancellor highlighted, is uh, more about visibility. Whether we, uh, uh, we whether we can uh, highlight what we are doing in addition to obviously doing things. So, uh, webometric is uh, no different. So, 
I'll take you through the uh, steps on what is happening, how it works, and then uh, we'll get uh, to some uh, clarifications on doubts if you have any at the end. So, what is a Weber metric ranking? Um, although um, it is a web based ranking, as per uh, Weber metric themselves, uh, they claim it as a ranking of not just websites, but of universities. That's how uh, they are claiming. Uh, so ranking of universities, not just the website of the universities. Why they claim so is uh, for the following reason. So they are doing ranking based on two aspects. One, uh, they again call it Weber metric or all missions. So everything that is visible through the uh, visible of a university through the web. And then uh, a bibliometric, which is basically the research uh, factors or the research indicators, which doesn't have to be visible through the uh, like the university web itself, but other means, other websites and so on. So they are using both the metrics or indicators uh, in terms of uh, coming up with the rank. Uh, so the main objective, why uh, when uh, the Weber metrics started, their objective is to keep this open access and um, like uh, uh, better or improve the open access or promote open access. The idea of open access uh, in terms of journals and things you already know, but in general, the idea of open access is any uh, knowledge that is generated within a university uh, by the universities, whether they can be accessed by others, uh, outsiders or uh, peers and colleagues from other places. So that is basically the idea by, by a bigger, larger community, whether the university uh, generated knowledge can be accessed by others. That is uh, what is webometric uh, claims to be measuring. So that's the idea. So um, therefore, like uh, the, the 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 if you want to improve the ranking, it's basically you have to improve the quality and the quantity both of the web content of universities, um, including pedagogy. So these things. <clears throat> so in addition, like so the in terms of when they started, like I said, long time back. Uh, 2004 is when uh, Webometric released their first ranking and therefore they are doing it for the 17th year now. Every year they do two uh, rounds of uh, uh, full coverage of higher education institution ranking, um, which involves different countries uh, and so on. Right? So um, uh, basically as of now, uh, the last ranking they did was uh, every year they do twice. The last one was uh, released in July this year, and the next one is going to be for so January, July is they are the two cycles every year. So uh, as of now, they are doing they are ranking about thirty thousand higher education institutions. These are their claim, and uh, across two hundred countries. And also the editor of this ranking. So this is uh, done by a research institution. I'll come to that later. Uh, the ranking is done by a research institution. And uh, the editor of the ranking is uh, a popular researcher in uh, similar aspects in web based ranking, university rankings, and uh, such research. He has done and he has really good uh, publication record on doing so. Um, so, uh, the, the Webometric, he said that they claim this is the largest uh, ranking system that is out there uh, in terms of uh, higher education uh, ranking. Uh, higher education institution ranking because they are ranking large number of institutions and uh, compared to the others but most of these ranking are done through web or internet based resources and therefore uh, the member institutions or these higher education institutions uh, do not have to submit applications form or ranking forms for uh, getting involved in this ranking process and it, that that makes it easy and uh, like scalable, but how they are able to do so many institutions easily is because uh, this process is automatic. So to some extent automatic, institutions do not have to go and uh, enroll themselves, submit details, submit data, uh, that is not needed. Uh, in, on, in comparison, other famous rankings like uh, the Times or the QS ranking, they, we have to like the institutions have to submit such details to those in um, uh, ranking to appear and also they had to, we had to keep on updating such data. So the institution had to give data uh, uh, through some process, but uh, Webometric is not, it's automatic. So like I said, they are doing this ranking twice a year. So why uh, they are reasoning, so why uh, they think uh, this ranking is useful and why they are doing it, their objectives again coming from their website uh, on uh, under the objectives listed. So uh, the, the original, uh, 
objective or the rank, the web of uh, the ranking objective is to promote web publication. So put things on the web, uh, whatever is um, like I said, open access. That's the main objective, right? So uh, it also uh, improves with time uh, that uh, the, the whatever the material that is that the, or whatever the knowledge that is generated within these higher education institutions can be shared. And so it can be done in various ways. And they also claim that if uh, an institution thinks that their uh, content, uh, the, the, their, uh, the real academic uh, trend is not reflected, or their stand, academic stand is not reflected in the webometric ranking, uh, they are asking to uh, look at various aspects, as aspects like um, uh, things like the university's web policy, how uh, the volume and the quantity of the electronic publications that are done by the university, how these things are done, they are suggesting to look at them and to improve and also to improve because uh, as per the Webomatic research team, uh, they claim this is the best way they can think of in terms of doing the ranking using web. And therefore, uh, they are suggesting uh, the institutions to help the process by uh, enabling or uh, allowing access to the material or the knowledge that is generated within institution in various ways. So that's basically the objectives of why uh, the webometric is doing this ranking from their perspective. Right? So now let's go into some details, like for instance, what's happening and how uh, where are University of Pera is, where are, like, uh, where are Sri Lanka is in terms of these rankings and so on. Right? So I'm putting numbers from uh, the last two uh, ranking uh, that has happened. So I'm calling it status July 2020, meaning by July 2020 what has happened. So this is basically 2020 had two ranking uh, rounds. Uh, the first one happened in January, and uh, give me a second. So first one happened in January. So in the January edition, you can see uh, how. So the you can look at the overall number which are uh, circled or oval shaped. So those two are the the uh, the, uh, the ranking numbers worldwide ranking for uh, Sri Lankan universities. And what I'm listing here are the first two. Uh, so in January uh, ranking, Peradeniya was number one, and overall world ranking of Peradeniya was uh, 1895. So uh, Colombo was number two. And there are other aspects uh, in terms of how this ranking uh, are calculated. I'll go into that later. So there, for instance, there are like, in fact, like the four aspects, and these ranking are, are done in four aspects, and then uh, the weighted average is taken to put the final rank. Right? So that's how it works. So I'm just looking at the last number for now, overall. So in July, um, uh, what has happened is, as you can see, the Peradeniya number has gone. Uh, in fact, like if you take the world ranking, Peradeniya and uh, Colombo, both of them have improved in their ranking in July uh, uh, numbers. But uh, as you can see, uh, Colombo has uh, over uh, come uh, above uh, Peradeniya in the uh, July uh, numbers uh, by a little, so by, by about uh, 60 uh, ranking per. So that is what has happened uh, and obviously they have improved about 300 plus during that period. So uh, that uh, is the sort of the status in terms of ranking, but let's not, uh, let, let's go into more detail and like to try to understand how it, this ranking works and uh, what uh, the research, uh, like the university community can do in terms of helping. And what we are doing uh, as uh, the web uh, ranking committee of the university and also as uh, academic. So uh, to give more details, there are these four numbers, like I said, uh, the numbers are, or the indicators. The indicators are called presence, uh, visibility, transparency or openness, excellence of scholar. So there are these four numbers or, or four parameters or four indicators. Uh, each indicator has its own weight, as you can see. Uh, the presence has a weight of 5%. Visibility has the highest weight, 50%. So half of the rankings go coming from the visibility and uh, transparency, is ten, transparency sorry, is 10%. Excellence of the scholar is 35%. And also it shows, uh, the, the, this table also shows from where this uh, uh, information are, like are taken, right? So we don't, like I said, um, we are not as a university and none of the universities are giving this data to the webometric team, but they are taken from other tools, other online tools. For instance, the presence ranking is taken from the, the Google search itself, the Google search engine's results are used for figuring out uh, the presence ranking, but it means I'll come to that uh, a little later. 
and uh, the visibility ranking is uh, uh, taken the visibility numbers are taken from ahf and all majestic these tools and uh, transparency is taken from google scholar google scholar pages and the excellence uh, numbers are taken from scimago so these are the four um, or five tools uh, so in the visibility category you can see there are two tools and other places one each so five tools online tools uh, that are used uh, to do this and uh, these tools again are mostly working uh, automatic so the, the tools uh, go uh, scroll the internet go through the web and figure out these numbers on its own you know like how google search works i mean we are not uh, putting telling the google search to do this and that uh, it uh, does it on its own uh, using some algorithm google has developed so same applies for uh, other some of the other tools as well generally they are automatically done but some tools need human input i'll come to that uh, as we go right so but these things are sort of automatically out there and those numbers are taken and uh, the weights are applied uh, to finalize a final number right so uh, what what do they mean like if you take the presence ranking or presence indicator what it means is it's basically uh, what it means is uh, the presence of a university is measured by uh, its website uh all its website and sub website like if you take peradeniya the www pdnaclk is this website and also it has so many other sub domains of website for instance if you take uh, the faculty of agriculture it has like agri.pdnaclk if you take engineering institute of medicine and other one and like if you take some faculty department they have their own sub domains too so all these are everything that is ending with pdnaclk domain all that website uh, web uh, content together is what uh, uh, constitute for this presence rank so it's just uh, the total number is basically the size the total number of web pages that are published uh, in all these domains together is what is taken and it's given 5 percent of the weight for the final rank and uh, the next one is visibility so visibility as you can see it's 50 percent so how visibility is calculated is a bit uh, a bit tricky uh, you know, I'll, i'll first tell you uh, what it how it is calculated and then i'll tell you why it is done so so if you take visibility how it is cal uh, uh, calculated is by uh, going and looking at all the other websites who are uh, referring to peradeniya website let's say there is a there is a website like let's say uh, a website at another university let's say columbia university has a website columbia university website if columbia university has a website and that website referred to peradeniya university website in some context then that is considered for the impact ranking so the idea being look so therefore you, you go and go around the world and look at all the other websites it doesn't have to be a university it can be any website any one of all these websites they are they, they if they have mentioned peradeniya when i say peradeniya it's not the name it's the website again So the website address of Peradeniya or subdomain addresses of Peradeniya, Peradeniya some faculty, some department, some centers. So their website, if they are mentioned in other websites, then you take all the total count of all these other websites, and then the more you have, the better. That is how it is done. So the idea is uh, uh, something uh, a bit simple. The idea is basically uh, how uh, much important these other universities are like. If other uh, sorry other websites are giving to the content in peradeniya website that is the idea that's the impact impact meaning like so we are putting some useful content meaning uh, so if somebody is coming and uh, linking to a university of peradeniya website it basically means uh, we are putting some content that is useful for us right so that is the idea so uh, that is where uh, this visibility count comes from and 50% of the count is from this and then there are the these two are the 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 web of metric thing the other two are mostly like the uh, bibliography and related so the third one is uh, i mean third and fourth both are research related and uh, they are uh, they account for 50 45% of in total starting from uh, google scholar profiles so what how uh, google scholar profile uh, web of metric over time has changed the way how they calculate the uh, scope but now how they calculate the rank uh, of each institution and then they score it so uh, right now the, the the scheme they are using is the following like that is what is mentioned here 
So basically, the Google Scholar transparency is or the openness is calculated by taking the top cited researchers in a university or an institute, or such higher education institution. So number of citations, uh, they are going to take the top 210 authors of each institution. So if you take Peradeniya, Peradeniya's top 210 listed authors in Google Scholar page. So Google Scholar page has institutional pages. So if you search for Peradeniya, you'll get the institutional page. How do Google Scholar decide an institutional page is by looking at the domain name of your email address. So from there, uh, you list, and then you see uh, you, they take from the whole list. Let's say Peradeniya has 800 researchers or 1,000 researchers. So you have 1,000, ideally, you have 1,000 Google Scholar pages. So out of the 1,000, you take the 210 first. And from the 210, you remove the top 20. Uh, they call them outliers. And the ne next 190, you add all their citations together, the total number of citations. When you add them together, the total number what's the number that is going to be used for deciding your app and that is 10 percent and then the excellence rank the last one is coming from the papers that are listed in, in uh, this under these 26 different disciplines in Simago. so if your paper is listed in Simago, and uh, if you have uh, in one of these disciplines or if they have 26 different disciplines and uh, if your papers are among the top 10 uh, most cited uh, then you are going to be getting points for that and uh, the, the you know, institutions are going to be ranked based on that, right? So uh, that's how these four uh, different categories work. So I'll go into a little more details and explain this. So before I do that, uh, I mean, in, now given that I have explained what these four things are, the presence, the impact, the openness, the excellence, now you can see the top 10 universities uh, in Sri Lanka, that, that's the Sri Lanka ranking. And that the next line is next column is the world ranking in the 10 universities or 10 institutions. And you can see how they are ranked in these different aspects, right? So if you take, uh, for instance, Peradeniya, uh, Peradeniya rank sixth in the presence, uh, fourth in the impact, first in the openness, second in the excellence. Uh, that is how uh, Peradeniya rank. And you can see Colombo is ranked, uh, I mean, Colombo is now the rank number by input, but like as you can see, they are not number one in any one of these four aspects. But uh, when you do the weighted average or weighted uh, yeah, average, they are the best, they are the top, right? So, and you can see openness, uh, Peradini is at the top, impact, uh, Moratua is at the top, presence, open university is at the top, uh, excellence, Ruhuna is at the top. Right, so that's uh, how these four I mean, top within the world ranking, or within Sri Lanka individual. Uh, but then you put them together, Columbia is at the top for now, uh, in the last uh, July update. So uh, to go into a little more detail and look at each one of them, say if you take a presence, uh, the 5%, uh, you can see, like I told you, like the presence is calculated based on the total number of web pages we have. Uh, Peradin is the sixth place in the web presence ranking. We are the lowest in that like out of the four categories, this is where we are very low. And uh, the number of web pages we have as of now, uh, like uh, in July, uh, that when I did this, uh, like cal calculated, somewhere in August, uh, we have about 136,000 web pages uh, compared to other places where they have, right? So, and therefore the ranks are accordingly calculated. And uh, uh, so what we have done about uh, this, for instance, presence, um, we keep on improving and adding more uh, content to the web. So it's basically adding more content, making it more visible. So recently what we are doing is we are also adding, uh, in fact, like we have almost completed this project recently uh, of adding all the uh, university, like sorry, university societies and clubs into the university websites so that they can be, um, uh, they can be like, uh, uh, counted towards the total uh, um, content of the university. So adding such uh, things will add obviously more useful content that are useful. So you can see some example uh, pages that are added, like for instance, um, Rotrek uh, is added at Rotrek at dot C S O C for society at dot P D N A C L K and soil science society. There's just two examples of all the other uh, societies, clubs and uh, um, student uh, bodies are added to these pages. So that's something that we are doing. Also, we are uh, these also creating uh, a lot of uh, uh, student pages, so pages of alumni, 
pages of uh, different uh, like uh, groups all that we are creating and letting them add content useful content and all that to improve them uh, the next one is visibility or impact where perajani as of now is at the fourth place i mean as of uh, july is at the fourth place and, uh, uh, and and you can see our numbers the number of so this is basically the number of uh, other uni other websites or universities or institutions so any other websites uh, from where every university is getting links to like for instance moratua has 6000 other uh, 6000 websites linking back to more content in moratua website whereas in has 2000 so um, uh, how i mean the, remember the intention of this is to uh, have useful content in your website so that others will come and cite or come and refer so others will come and refer meaning they'll put a, they'll write something put a news and link it back to us so they'll put an article and link it back to our, our article uh, various other things so right basically we had to have useful content uh, so that others can come and add. so uh, we are in the process of adding such content and making this better and improving and uh, there are a few measures taken uh, in terms of this allowing students to add content our uh, students to make pages and have content uh, and that uh, link it back and various other things and also we are also telling the alumni who are uh, having uh, such uh, interest to get uh, involved and help so the the next one is uh, the web the, sorry the, the, the transparency the openness where i want to spend a little more time in fact like uh, the university research council has already taken steps and has circulated and sent the information to faculties and institute like within the university institutions asking to help uh, uh, the university or the, the the whole committee with this idea of webometric ranking how the transparent ranking work so the transparent ranking like i said it works uh, based mentioned earlier top sided researchers you are they are taking like the top like the last time they took 210 top uh, sided researchers and they take out 20 and the 190 top sided researchers their citations are added together that is what is done right so uh, it's within the top 10 so yeah, i'm just going to list a few things that are mentioned in the webometric site itself right so and uh, we can also discuss further other aspects of it so obviously to do this uh, the first thing what is what you need is every uh, member every every researcher in the university should have uh, before this is taken from I mean, these numbers are taken from google scholar profiles so every researcher in the university should have a google scholar profile so that this number can be taken by google and then by webometric from there so google scholar pages are the one that are used for getting these numbers to webometric uh, so i'm going to list down a number of items that are relevant in that aspect taken again from webometric website so so webometric suggests that you use uh, official name uh, and the university affiliation and the institution email address. So, institution email address is very important because a Google Scholar is listing you under an institution only by looking at your institutional email address, and uh, that is the one that is going to be taken by uh, the Google uh, Webometric, right? So, Google Scholar. Although in Google Scholar you can, you might just search for University of Peradeni or Peradeni, and you can get a list of papers. They are the Peradeni is mentioned somewhere. But those ones are not going to be considered as institutional uh, profile pages. So if you want your page to be considered an institutional research uh, profile page, you have to use uh, the university, like an email address ending with PDN ACLK, ending with PDN ACLK. It can have a starting with something else like DNG.PDN ACLK, um, CE.PCN, PDN ACLK, civil. all that are possible. But it has to end with PNACLK, then it will be considered an institutional email address. And then it will be considered that those profiles which are using such email addresses, or so those researchers who are using such email addresses, will be considered under the institutional email address. So there are a few other uh, aspects. So we had to so obviously increase in the uh, citations of not the top 20, the next is the way of getting it better. Uh, and uh, uh, they also have some guidelines, things like we should not make uh, profiles. It's possible in Google Scholar to go and make profiles for non-user, like non-people. Like for instance, we can make a profile for a lab. We can make a profile for a group. 
we can make a profile for a department so those things are possible and uh, google scholar is not verifying those things let's say i have an email address at like something like um, computer engineering at pdn ce at pdn aclk it's a departmental email address i can go and make a profile for that and i can add papers there so such things are prohibited by uh, both google is not allowing telling you not to do it and uh, what webomatic is saying is if you do such thing they are going to remove the whole institution from this ranking because that is misleading so uh, we should not uh, make profile pages for institutions um, like or paper or publications like journals um, departments and groups but it has to be individual and that's how it should work and uh, uh, when you have multiple so th th this also sometimes happens let's say for instance because the things like google scholar pages are first generated automatically and then we can go and uh, or like uh, get it to ourselves and can update it and so on so when you have multiple names different names in different publications you had you might end up have or different email addresses you might end up having multiple uh, google profile pages or google scholar profile pages so uh, it's it's a good idea to uh, not to keep them as it is but to clean and make a single one so if you you see like under your name there are multiple uh, because you had multiple email addresses at different publications for instance you would have had different uh, um, google scholar profile so you had to clean them up and delete the others and maintain only one obviously the, if you are attached to the university maintain one with verified email address from the university email address so that it can be counted towards the university uh, publications and therefore it can be counted towards the transparency of this and uh, they are also suggesting not to uh, use degrees affiliations and other things in the author name so uh, in the author name itself don't put uh, like affiliation of other university other universities uh, degree name with universities if you any put things like that it can get con the, the web can get confused like whether you are part of the university you are claiming or part of the university from where you got the degree so those confusions can come in so google profile is not a place to uh display those facts like the, from which university you graduated which university you went and did your research those things uh, they are suggesting not to include those right so include just uh, the name and also the institution from uh, like the verified email address of the institution and also there is a place to put the institution as well but uh, like i said uh, this is happen this happens only through the email uh, like the institution so uh, as of now we are not doing that bad uh, so Uh, in the world rank in the universe in the in in the in sri lanka in google scholar uh, the openness ranking sri lanka perajani is at the top but uh, we believe that uh, we can do better by including all the researchers who are in the university that is not happening that's not happening in the past and uh, the research council the university research council also doing a lot of activities in terms of bringing all researchers into this uh, the google scholar profile the google scholar platform and when there are uh, uh, like multiple accounts and uh, they want to clean them up and make one so that's uh, what we are doing so the number of research uh, uh, citations as of well at that time is also listed here uh, the top 210 minus top 20 20 people are removed i like i said so it basically uh, start number starting from uh, 21 to 210 uh, those are the total that are uh, displayed here so uh, what we are doing is we also have prepared like uh, the the web, web ranking committee has also prepared a, a guideline on how it can be helped and also the university research council is helping uh, on this aspect on how it can be improved right so we also have some guidelines if you want i can share all these links on how to prepare google prof, uh, scholar profile pages so in fact like they are automatically done but we had to the, the researchers had to go and claim them if they are not already done so using an email address of uh, your choice like but then in, in our case we are uh, strongly requesting to do it using the university uh, email address so it doesn't have to be a, like a this email address g suite email address that is it doesn't matter as long as it's it has pdn aclk in the domain in the email address uh, part the later part of the email address that's good enough so the last um, uh, one that is used for the ranking is the excellence uh, one like i said uh, it is done by so basically you had to have papers in uh, simago listed uh, so it's uh, it, it basically the simago full database has all the papers but uh, but what is taken for this ranking is the count of the top 10% cited 
So each category, if you have 26 disciplines, they have. So from each category, uh, they take the top 10 cite cited papers. And then from that, they count how many of these are affiliated with every institution. Like if it's affiliated with Peradeniya, how many of them? Um, other institutions, how many of them? And then they are taking the total and then you put the ranks based on that. That's how this ranking works. Uh, so as of now, uh, Peradeniya is uh, in the world 1,700 odd. And uh, in the country too, this is the uh, July status. So obviously how uh, you can improve is, one is to make sure all the authors of the Peradeniya University ones have affiliation and then the email addresses and details about the university. So that we know, and also obviously encourage uh, researchers to uh, public, uh, publish papers in high rank uh, journals and conferences and therefore, and also good research so that they can be, they'll be cited more and appear in the top 10%. So those are the like uh, the, the basic idea behind uh, how the ranking works. They are also, I also have a few uh, typically asked or the frequently asked questions. Uh, again, they are coming from the web matrix. Uh, I'll go through them and then, then I, uh, oh yeah. So uh, oh, I'll first show uh, this uh, concern like most of you have generally. So I will, uh, I'm just accessing Google Scholar page uh, to show this difference between the, the institutional, um, whether we are part of the institution or not. Right? So if you just for search for uh, Peradeniya, you will get a list of articles where Peradeniya is mentioned. Uh, but this is not, so if, if your paper appears somewhere here, it doesn't mean that your paper is counted towards the institution's uh, counting, right? So what you really have to do is if you search for uh, University of Peradeniya, uh, you will see Google Scholar will automatically identify that it as an institution and it will show uh, this user profile for University of Peradeniya. So, which also says PDN ACL. So, this is the one used by Webometric to decide whether you are part of the university or not. You are, your numbers are counted or not. So, if you click this, you'll be taken to a list, and the list has researchers, and they are basically uh, profiles and the citations, number of citations. So this is the number that is going to be used. So, so if, you are, uh, if you are a highly cited researcher, if you are a researcher and if you have a Google Scholar profile, and if your name is not appearing in this list, so remember how to go to the list. I'll once again tell you, Scholar, Google, uh, Google just search for Google Scholar. In the search, say University of Peradeniya, then it will uh, it'll show a link, University of Peradeniya dot PDN ACLK, the one with the domain name. Uh, and then you uh, look at the list, in this list, if your name is appearing, then your uh, research uh, citation, so the number of citations are counted towards webometric rank. If not, uh, it's not counted, right? So uh, this list, you can like uh, go like this and see uh, whether you are, your name is there in that list. Uh, if your name is not there, then you are not counted. Uh, you are not, your, name, your profile is not associated to the institution in terms of this email address, like I said. So if you can see all this, uh, so you can see like uh, these email addresses, it says verified email at pdnaclk, verified email at inch pdnaclk. So it doesn't have to be pdn by itself, it can be any subdomains of pdn, so this, this one you can say verified email eepdnaclk, -E so all that are good. Right? So that's how uh, you have to make sure it's uh, there. Sorry.
something has happened to my The mid slow. So anyway, so the the uh, the FAQs I had, uh, maybe I'll just can show you as it is here without going to the presentation. Uh, so they are related to whether the, the questions like uh, whether the web metric ranking is uh, just a, uh, a web based ranking of the websites uh, as per uh, google's uh, like sorry web metric it's not just a ranking of the website they also are considering other aspects like uh, uh, the uh, uh, like the uh, research uh, profiles so, uh, obviously the research profiles are again coming from websites but uh, they are maintained by other entities and not just the university website. And also, obviously, the, whether other universities are uh, dealing with, uh, like how they are referring to us, our university. So that's how uh, they are measured. Uh, plus, also, uh, this, whether the, the, these numbers, how, uh, how reliable they are, right? So uh, the, as per the Webometric, these numbers are um, uh, like this. These are done by researchers, a, research, a set of researchers uh, based on a research institution, and uh, the researchers have good understanding of how uh, web and uh, the web, met web metrics work, and uh, therefore they are using those numbers to uh, come up with this ranking, and uh, they are mixing both uh, how the university uh, keep its uh, content or the website itself plus how the useful the website itself is through the, the impact from others, how they are connecting, plus uh, from the research perspective, how the publications and the citations work within the institution. And uh, so that is like just the citations, total number of citations of the top researchers, plus uh, how good uh, the research is. It is calculated by taking this top percentage, 10% uh, cited papers from the 26 disciplines that are listed in Magazine. So those are the four measures that are used for doing it. And therefore they claim uh, it is a decent measure of uh, how the universities are. And plus they also claim uh, they have done correlations with the university, other, other type of university ranking like research-based rankings and so on. And there is a good correlation between the two, between the webometric ranking and other, others. So that's uh, basically what I have uh, uh, to present. I'll, I'll be happy to answer questions if you have it. Thank you for that very informative web webinar, sir. Now we shall have a short question and answer session moderated by Professor Terence Madhujit along with our guest speaker. Thank you, uh, Professor Ragil, for excellent presentation. Now, um, are there any questions? Uh, so that there are any questions we can direct to Professor Ragel to get explanation. So one question from me, uh, Professor Ragel. Now um, you mentioned that if other institutions cite uh, our websites, so that will count towards the ranking. So is there a way that uh, we can upload our uh, popular articles, for example, so that when the popular articles go on website, the other people, other institutions will uh, uh, cite, uh, refer to those things, then that will be finally counted towards the uh, webometric ranking, as I understand. Is that right, uh, Professor Agar? Yeah, the that, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, so the second item here, the visibility ranking is coming, uh, coming from or visibility, or it's also called impact. Okay, this ranking is coming from uh, how good 
uh, the material we have. So the idea how they calculate how good material we have is by seeing whether others are referring, putting links. Referring meaning putting, not like uh, research reference, just links. So we should have our articles linkable. So uh, let's say a news article somewhere else. I say, okay, this, this thing is mentioned here. Uh, so uh, such counts are taken. So as of now, the count, uh, like uh, these numbers you can see here. Uh, wait a second, I'll show you. Yeah. So, so you can see, so as of now, uh, like for instance, our web, the content in our website are uh, mentioned like the 2000 times in other places. Uh, that is why we are at four and more to a web page content are uh, mentioned in 6000 other places. Uh, so that's, uh, so the more it is mentioned, the better our ranking becomes. And also this is the highest percentage, 50%. Uh, so you are right. Uh, so we are also encouraging so from a web, uh, uh, ranking perspective, we are also encouraging researchers even to put uh, like a news article, some information about the new findings we make, interesting things we do, uh, things that are interesting to others. It doesn't have to be like new things also. Uh, things that are interesting to uh, students, researchers, uh, like school kids, students, various other things. So they can uh, be put in our website. Yes, correct. Arising uh, from the same question, uh, Professor Raghil, now uh, is there a space in our website to accommodate those articles, for example? Yes. I mean, like uh, space in the sense right now we are allowing so the, the university, like, so you know, like every website uh, starting from department website, faculty, university website, uh, we have news space, space for news. So those places are there. Uh, so where we can put uh, some articles, uh, and we, we, we are always looking for such articles and um, uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor can comment on it more because he is the one who is managing it. And um, I mean, he is the one who is overseeing it. And um, that is possible. And also now we are given access to uh, the students, alumni and also staff members to have their own pages. So even your pages, you can have anything you want, like anything sensible you want. They are all counted. It doesn't have to be on the main page of a university website. Mm. If it's a main page of a university website, it has more visibility. So people will easily find it. But it doesn't mean it has to be there. It can be anywhere. In, so we have 136,000 website pages. In those pages, anywhere, even my articles, if I think something is interesting, I can put the article in my page. And I can uh, convince the administration, the process to include a small news item about it in other places. So. Uh, it becomes popular, yes. Thank you. Uh, there are a few more questions from the audience. Can a domain be associated with other sites or pages so that it would be erroneously be calculated as a hit for our domain when in fact it is the other site that is access, it is in the chat box uh, as well. So that's uh, Shainal, I assume. Uh, so the, the question is about uh, domain so the webomatic is not looking at that so webomatic is not looking at uh, uh, webomatic is not even looking at how many hits we are getting so webomatic is not bothered about whether uh, one of our articles in our website how many times it's read is not counted right so what is counted is whether it is uh, connected in some it is mentioned in some other place mm -hmm. there was a time when uh, the counts were taken number of hits were taken in webomatic a long time back but now they have stopped that. So now it's just uh, just a matter of, uh, so because there are ways of uh, manipulating such things. So that is why I think Hena is asking this question. So the uh, answer here is Webomatic is not looking at the number of hits. They are just looking at a link, uh, whether the link is there in the other side. And uh, uh, they are not also bothered about where the other side is. Therefore, there can be also possibilities of misuses, but Webomatic is working on fixing those issues. Uh, so to answer you directly, no, it's not even, it doesn't really even matter. Uh, Vira Surya, uh, the next one is, can we make YouTube channels for each and every department and upload video lectures to increase the visibility? Uh, Madhavi, the answer to that is uh, uh, directly, direct answer is no. So uh, the YouTube channels you have are not going to be considered as university website content. Uh, the if you want to keep it in the university website content, okay, you can make a YouTube channel, but you had to put the like you had to put links and you had to put the uh, like videos and things in the university. So then only it will be counted. 
but there are obviously indirect benefits in all of this even the hits i mentioned earlier hit is number of hits number of times somebody is coming and accessing a website is not directly used by the web omnet but such hits will improve more people coming right so hits are used by say for instance google search uh, to bring things up so the things that are shown at the top are the one that are hit more uh, so therefore it till people will know about it and therefore they'll put link about it and all that so indirectly even things like youtube uh, channel will help but directly it's not counted uh, and there are some things in the question and answer as well uh, is having a well, so nava is asking is having a linkedin profile count towards visibility and research gate uh, profile so yes but uh, uh, only to some extent so things like uh, research gate and uh, linkedin they are going to be just one domain each so how this count works um, maybe i didn't explain that let me explain so this visibility count how it works is uh, they are going to be only one count from one institution or one domain let's say you have a count from uh, you have a you have like let's say you have 100 links from obviously there are like thousands link from facebook to our university website uh those thousand links are going to be counted just one domain because it's facebook so same applies for linkedin same applies for uh, research gate so research gate let's say there are thousand uh, of our researchers who have thousand profile pages but they are all under the same domain research gate so when they all say pd and aclk in their profiles they are all going to be counted towards one because research gate is a single domain i hope uh, now i answered you any other questions to professor ragil if there are no questions uh, let me thank uh, professor ragil for spending your valuable time with us uh, in a very short notice he agree kindly agreed to um, sensitize us uh, elaborate on this how the webometric ranking works and also how the individual researchers of the different faculties and centers can directly contribute towards achieving high uh, ranking so do you have anything to tell us uh professor ragel you can just uh, say something about how people can misuse this and or cheat the system <laughs> because we have experienced that some <laughs> some institutions are sort uh, of yeah. cheating like so, thing so that you can explain that as well since we are not cheating and we are doing a good job <laughs> in in this so maybe yeah so like i said there are ways of manipulating the system uh, intentionally or unintentionally we don't want to go there so it's possible to manipulate the system like for instance like i said this backlinks um they are coming from as long as they are coming from different domain names they are counted so uh, so you can go and let's say if you have money you can go and make websites and we have you can put links and those links can we can put links to the university for instance right so that's possible and uh, uh, therefore it's possible to manipulate this but uh, so webometric team uh, the research team is also trying hard uh, to uh, like uh, uh, overcome this issue that is why they, they started earlier with hits and then they removed the number of hits now they are so they are also improving they are researchers they are trying their best to do but yes like uh, uh, that i deputy vice chancellor sir mentioned there are ways in which institution can manipulate this to some extent yes i stop there <laughs> without going into details yes. okay uh, thank you very much professor agel once again uh, i need to mention few names here those who supported um, in this endeavor Uh, first of all uh, i should thank uh, vice chancellor sir although he is not here he wanted to come but unfortunately he is tied up with another selection committee meeting and the deputy vice chancellor sir professor parakram karnath who is always advising us guiding us uh, the urc providing lot of uh, valuable comments and uh, uh, thank you very much sir for your continuous support and uh, professor all the uh, Uh, professor shamin jindal sir director international research office for facilitating all this and in fact we organized this in collaboration with the inro 
and all the staff members of um, URC and the um, INRO for their valuable uh, support. And more importantly, all the participants who joined from various corners of the university.